Oh, hello. Welcome to the 2013 Hundy Challenge. Today we're going to be discussing Skyward Sword by Paul Atreides. Well, this was an interesting book. Um, I had never heard of it before. Uh, that doesn't necessarily say a lot. Um, in keeping with kind of the random theme of the last few books I've been reading. Uh, this takes place in uh, Africa. This one's actually in North Africa. Um, I don't I, I don't know my geography well enough, or it may have been that it wasn't as exact in the 40s, you know. I wasn't clear whether it was, you know, Morocco or Algeria. Um, but it was... Uh, it takes place over the whole kind of area of North Africa... The, uh, French North Africa, I guess. So maybe it is Algeria. Um, this is about three Americans. Um, two of them are a couple. And I was never 100% clear if they were actually married. Uh, Kit and Port. Uh, but a lot of the time they claimed to be married. Um, but there were a lot of like nods and winks and things that like whenever someone would ask them if they were married, they would, you know, be like, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I kind of got the impression that maybe they were not actually. The third guy is third wheel, uh, Tunner, who kind of somewhere in between invited himself along or was invited along by one or both of them as a kind of a barrier. Um, in any case... Uh, they are very disrespectful of the culture. Um, they're very kind of self-centered, selfish people. Um, they all hate one another, and they hate the Arabs more, and they hate the French, and, and they, they kind of just are miserable, unhappy people. Um, and they all spend a lot of the book running away. Um, this is one of the things that really struck me as odd, uh, because it was sort of like, well, you ran away from New York to Africa. They're all they're all indolent, wealthy people, which uh, you know I, I guess they said they considered themselves travelers rather than tourists, uh, making the important distinction, whatever that is, between being a traveler and being a tourist. Um, so they're indolent wealthy, they run away from uh, America, and Port doesn't want to have anything to do with Europe, because it's kind of, I guess he's kind of like a proto-hipster, um, like he's too cool for Europe, post-war Europe, that kind of thing. Um, and so they think like Africa will be a really cool place to hang out. And then they spend a lot of the novel running away from each other. Um, Port in the first third, I don't know that it's necessarily like this, but the first third is kind of about Port, and he's running away from his wife or his semi-wife, Kit, um, and he finds just a random hooker who's not quite a hooker. She's a dancer, but you pay her for sex, whatever, and uh, they try to roll him, and... Then he runs away from them. And then the second third of the novel is... Well, anyway, Kit sleeps with Tunner, who's the third wheel guy. Um, and then they spend the second third of the novel running away from Tunner in really increasingly ridiculous ways. Um, Port lost his passport... And then uh, he learns that Tunner is coming to bring it to him, and he runs away because he's just so, I don't know, obsessed with getting away from these people. And then he dies of typhoid, and <laughs> Tunner still comes to see Kit, and then in the final third of the novel, she runs away off into the, the deep Sahara and uh, is kind of basically picked up, raped... Um, married. It's a very bizarre relationship with this wealthy Arabian merchant, uh, Belkasim. And then she runs away from him. 
Um, this was very uh, psychologically dark novel. They're obviously very disturbed people. Um, I didn't even get into. There's kind of this these secondary characters, which is a mother and a son, but they're they're also they also have an incestuous relationship, and they're constantly trying to roll the three travelers as well. And he the son was actually the one that stole Port's passport and then later Tunner's passport. Um, he had a whole racket going with the passports. Um, very strange people constantly on the run, you know, trying to find something in the Sahara. It, it was uh, kind of dark and kind of disturbing and kind of unpredictable. And I like when my characters are unpredictable, like you don't know what they're going to do. Because the whole time in, in my mind, me just being the kind of person I am, I'm like, well, okay, how is he or she, whoever the main character is, going to get back to America? And they always have ample opportunity. They're indolent wealthy. They, they have the money. They could, you know, hire help. Like every time that they keep going deeper and deeper into Africa, I'm like, why doesn't he just like hire a car and go back to Algiers, you know, but they don't, they just keep running and running. Um, it's, it's kind of hard. It was kind of hard for me to wrap my mind around. Um, but very interesting and, and peculiar behavior from these characters. Um, so this is definitely one of the better books I've read so far in this challenge and one I never heard of. So definitely check it out. Thanks for tuning in. Next time we're going to be talking about, the Prime of Miss Jean Brody by Muriel Spark.